everyone and welcome to the Time to Cook Club Advanced. Today we're going to be making spicy ginger and chocolate cake. So hopefully if you're joining me today you have all of your ingredients weighed out, measured and ready to go and also the equipment from the equipment list. So let's make a start. The first thing you need to do is you need to go and preheat your oven to either 180 degrees or gas mark 4 or 160 degrees if you're using a fan oven. The next thing we need to do is we need to prepare our cake tin. It's really important that we spend time at the beginning of a bake preparing our tins that we'll be using because this will really help us to be able to get the cake out once it's been cooked. So all I've done is I've drawn round the outline of my cake tin onto some non-stick baking paper and then cut it out, okay? I'm then going to pop some um, margarine um, all over the base, okay? Because this is going to kind of act like glue, I guess to stick the non-stick baking paper down and then I'm also going to butter the sides as well. Okay, so just make sure that your um, tin is really well greased because like I said, that's going to help um, when the cake's been cooked, um, it's gonna help you be able to get it out of the tin. Okay, great work guys. So once you've greased your tin, you then need to pop your um, circle of non-stick baking paper in and just press it down really well so that it covers the base and that it's not rising up at all, okay? Once you've prepared your tin, you can now pop it to one side and forget about it until we're ready to um, pop our cake mixture into it. Okay, so now we're ready to make our cake. So the first thing that goes into our mixing bowl is our self-raisin flour, okay? We're also going to add our one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. And it's one level teaspoon, so we're going to use the top of our pot to just level that off, okay? We're then gonna add all of our spices. So whenever we measure out any spices or herbs, we always do so over a separate bowl or container. And this is just to make sure that we're not spoiling the mixture that we've already got by adding too much spice to it, okay? So the first spice we're going to use is ground ginger, okay? We're going to add one tablespoon of ground ginger. It's going to give your um, cake a really lovely spicy gingery taste. We're also going to add a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, okay? And lastly, we're going to add a teaspoon of mixed spice. Great work guys, well done. Okay, we're going to give that mixture a good stir with a spoon just to mix in all of those lovely spices into the flour mix. Now what you need to do is you need to get your butter or your margarine, whatever you're using, okay, and pop it into your um, bowl. Okay, we're going to be rubbing in the fat into the um, dried ingredients, okay? So if you're using butter and it's come straight from the fridge, then it's a really good idea to chop it into small pieces first, okay? Um, which is going to make it much easier to rub in. So, let's add this. And then, make sure you've got your sleeves up. We're going to be rubbing in the um, butter or the margarine into our dry ingredients. So when we're rubbing in, we're kind of almost tickling um, the dry ingredients with our fingers. We're doing very much this motion. And if you can get your fingers and your hands out of the bowl a little bit, like so, then you'll be adding a little bit of air to your um, mixture as well, okay? So the reason why we don't use our whole hand um, to rub in the fats is because otherwise the butter would all melt and kind of clump together, okay? So that's why we're using our fingertips um, to rub in the um, fat, okay? And we'll just keep going until your mixture resembles um, breadcrumbs, okay? Every now and again, you can give your bowl a little shake and that will bring the bigger lumps of um, butter or margarine to the top, okay? And you can see what you have left to work on. So I'm just gonna keep going until I have rubbed in all of my um, margarine. And then join me back here and we can continue with our baking. Okay, so welcome back guys. So hopefully your mixture resembles fine breadcrumbs. And I've just had to go and wash my hands because they were really messy. The next thing you'll need is your saucepan. We're gonna add the brown sugar to your saucepan. 
We're also going to add our treacle, okay. It was very, very sticky. <laughs> A good tip is to warm your spoon first, um, dip it in some boiling hot water, okay, before um, taking out your treacle, and this will help to stop your treacle from getting stuck to your spoon. We're then going to add our scalding syrup. And then we're going to add the milk too. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat um, all of these ingredients on a low heat on the hob until they're all melted and mixed together. So join me back here once you have heated up um, these ingredients and they're all um, nicely mixed in and we can continue with our baking. Okay, welcome back guys. So hopefully by now all of those ingredients have um, melted, okay, and all combined into a nice smooth mixture. You're then going to pour that mixture into your bowl of dried ingredients, okay, making sure you get it all out. Okay, and then using a spoon, you're just going to mix um, all of those ingredients together until it forms a nice, smooth cake batter. It smells absolutely amazing. Really, really lovely. Okay. So the last ingredient we need to add is our egg. So in this recipe, we're using one large egg. We always crack our egg into a separate container or cup before we add it to the mixture, just so that way we can see that the egg looks fine and there's no shell in it. Okay. Yeah, that looks great. And using a fork, you can just um, beat the egg a little bit, okay, just to kind of mix the yolk with the white before adding it into your cake batter, like so. And then again, using your spoon, you're going to mix in that egg mixture, okay, until your um, mixture resembles a really lovely thick cake batter. Now keep using your spoon to scrape the ingredients down from the sides of your bowl, okay. And this is just gonna help you to make sure that all the ingredients are really thoroughly mixed together. Okay, great work guys, well done. So now what you need to do is you need to go and grab that tin that you prepared earlier and you're going to pour the cake mixture into the tin. Okay, like so. Now, if you have a spatula, you can use it to make sure that you've got all of that lovely mixture out and you're not wasting any. Great work guys, well done. So now you need to go and pop this into the oven for 50 minutes to cook. Now you'll know if the cake is cooked because when you insert a sharp knife into the middle it will come out clean. If when you insert your knife into the middle of the cake, um, it, there's some wet mixture on the knife, then you need to pop your cake back into the oven for another couple of minutes before you check again. When your knife comes out clean, you need to cook the cake for another five minutes before turning the oven off. Then wait another five minutes until you take your cake out of the oven. You then need to leave the cake to stand for another 10 minutes before turning the cake out onto a cooling rack. And before you turn the cake out onto a cooling rack, you, um, it's a really good idea to just loosen the cake from the sides of the tin by um, popping a sharp knife all the way around um, the tin. So once your cake has been turned out onto a cooling rack and is cool, then join me back here and we can finish off our bake together. Okay, welcome back guys. So hopefully by now you have your spicy ginger cake out of the tin. 
um, and it's now cool. So now what you need to do is you need to break up your um, dark chocolate and ginger into small squares, okay, and pop it into a microwavable bowl. Now if you don't have a microwave, don't worry guys, you can do this um, in a bowl, okay? And then you can pop the bowl on top of a small saucepan of um, boiling water, okay? And use that to melt your chocolate. You just need to make sure that none of the water goes into the chocolate, otherwise it will spoil it, okay? So you're just going to break this up into small pieces, okay? And then if you are using a microwave, then you need to microwave it on high, probably for about a minute, okay, before checking it, giving it a stir, removing your spoon, and then popping it in at 30 second intervals until it's completely melted. And join me back here once your chocolate has melted and we can finish off our bake together. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully by now your chocolate has been melted, okay, um, and it's now lovely and smooth. So all that's left to do is for you to spoon your um, chocolate, melted chocolate, onto the top of your cake and allow it to cool before slicing and enjoying with a lovely cup of tea or cup of coffee. So I really hope you guys enjoyed joining me today to make our spicy ginger and chocolate cake. But more importantly, I hope you enjoy eating it and sharing it with your family. Thank you so much for joining me today and I really look forward to cooking with you again next week when we'll be making another delicious bake from our sparkler and tinsel menu. Have a great rest of your week guys, bye!